So roughly around a month ago, the former NBA superstar Gilbert Arenas shared an opinion on another basketball legend that really captured my attention. Since he made these comments, I've been wanting to make this video for quite a while now. Now before we get into what he said, let me first be clear about my opinion on Arenas. As a YouTuber and as an analyst, Gilbert seems to be one of those guys who knows the right bold and sometimes outlandish takes that are perfectly suited to demand attention. Regardless of your opinion on him as an analyst, you have to recognize that this man is fantastic at his job when it comes to gaining viewers and getting basketball circles talking. Personally, I think some of his basketball opinions are ridiculous and worthy of criticism. But I'll also admit that every once in a while, he'll say something that's flat out brilliant, with tremendous insight and a unique perspective that people usually don't consider. So I'll stop delaying this any longer and take a listen for yourself to what he said. It was like, it was like Vince Carter, right? Yes. Vin it was just easy. Like, I, I, like, I'm so mad at Vince for what he did to the game. The GOAT debate what should have been him. 100%. Okay. He was so naturally gifted than anything you've ever seen. Period. He had everything. There was no, like, he had everything. He dribble, shoot, fade, moves. Footwork, like, He everything. had everything. If he had this, the mindset like Kobe, like I'm better than everyone and I'm gonna show y'all each, there was nobody who was stopping that man. Right. There was nothing that was stopping Vince Carter. When Vince Carter came in the lane, there was no big man that was willing to challenge it because they didn't want to be on ESPN. Excuse me. That that was that was him. Think about, go, show Toronto. Every time he went back to Toronto, show those stats. Because he didn't like them, they traded. Watch what he did to them every single time. He averaged damn near four. So you think the trade is what was what, what stopped his uh, hungriness? I just think he was, he was just too nice. Right? Now, although I've made several videos on Vince Carter, and I do believe he was one of the best players of his era, Gilbert is forcing me to look at him with a more critical lens. So let's quickly recap who Carter was and what his reputation is. Vince was a 6'6 shooting guard slash small forward who was taken with the fifth overall pick in the 1998 NBA draft. Carter is recognized today as the greatest dunker in NBA history. He's one of the greatest vertical leapers of all time. He was an all-time great three-point shooter. He could handle the basketball. He could shoot from just about anywhere on the court. He's among the players with the most game-winning shots in NBA history. He had one of the longest careers that the league has ever seen, and his overall athleticism was off the charts. Yet, with all of that being said, he's not typically recognized as a top 10, top 20, or even top 30 player in the league's history. So just why is that? As Gilbert alluded to, Vince was a player who had all the skills, all the abilities, and seemingly all of the ingredients to be one of the all-time greats. This isn't something I'm just observing and saying in our modern year of 2023, but this was the way people felt about Carter in his first few seasons in the NBA. He was a player who was constantly being compared to Michael Jordan, and many people even went as far as calling him the next Michael Jordan. Whether it was his nicknames or his collectibles, everyone was continuously drawing parallels between Air Jordan and Air Canada. Just to give you some perspective on the level of hype for Carter in his early career, consider this. I still have my Beckett Price Guide magazine from the summer of the year 2000. These tell you the market value of NBA trading cards at that time. And in basically every basketball set, Vince Carter's cards were worth more than the great Kobe Bryant, regardless of the fact that Kobe had just won a championship in Los Angeles. That is how good people were projecting Carter to be. The thing is, I witnessed the entirety of Insanity's career, so I have my own perspective on why he didn't make it to that all-time great status. For one, I do agree with Gilbert in the sense that Carter was just too nice. That may be a bit of an oversimplification, 
But to expand on this take, I would say that Carter lacked the relentless competitive drive and tenacity. Unlike guys like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and Larry Bird, Carter didn't usually approach the game with an angry chip on his shoulder. And the few cases where he did were often revenge games against his former team, the Toronto Raptors. And Agent Zero was absolutely correct on this point as well. Some of the best games of Carter's career came against his former team, the Raptors. And it was obvious to everyone who witnessed those games that he had a little extra motivation heading into those contests. Honestly, I see this as evidence that Carter's competitive drive was a bit inconsistent in comparison to the previously mentioned great wing players. I believe another indication of a player's competitive drive is how he plays on the defensive end of the floor since basically half of what makes a player a great defender is his hustle, his effort, and his commitment. Skilled athletic greats like Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James all made all defense teams numerous times, yet Carter never earned a single selection, and he's usually described today as a decent defender at best. Another observation of mine is that Carter didn't maintain his physical conditioning as well as those other greats. Yes, he was able to do windmill dunks in his early 40s, but I always viewed that as more of his natural born athleticism rather than his commitment to staying in the best shape possible. For the most part, Carter had an extremely healthy basketball career, yet he started putting on weight in his days after Toronto. And by the time he was in his early 30s, he had been reduced to that of a role player, when most of the all-time great superstars were still competing for championships at that age. So yeah, he was kinda too nice, but for a lack of a better term, he simply didn't have that dog in him like many other greats have had. Now I will say, I do think it's a little unfair for Gilbert to say that he would have been so much better if he had the drive and nature of Kobe Bryant. Well no duh Sherlock, that's true for just about every former player in basketball history, including Gilbert Arenas. But at the heart of what he's saying, I do get his point. The ceiling for Carter was so much higher than what he actually reached because his commitment seemingly wasn't as strong as it was for many other legends. By no means is this meant to be a slander video towards Vince Carter. He was an incredible player who gets very overlooked by modern NBA stars. But to say that he had all of the abilities and all of the gifts to be a potential GOAT candidate, if he had the intangibles to go with it, is a correct statement in my humble opinion. So what do you guys think? Do you agree with me and Gilbert on this topic, or do you believe that we put too much potential on Carter and more than he was ever destined to reach? I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.